Well, hello. I'm going to present you the Vulcan Video Engine Streamer with the help of uh, Victor. So my name is Stefan Servo, and here is uh, Victor uh, Jacke from uh, where we are working for Igalia, and we have been working on the Vulcan Video for more than a year to now, and we'd like to share our work on on, on this uh, on this framework on this uh, effort. So on the agenda, I'm going to present the Vulcan video. Then I'm going to talk about JStreamer. We are in the JStreamer conference. And maybe we're going to have time like, to, make a, to have a demo. You're having a demo like, running right now here. So what is Vulcan video? Uh, Vulcan video, first we need to present the Vulcan. Vulcan is like a low-level graphics API. Uh, it's under the uh, Kronos Group umbrella. Uh, it has been initiated in 2016. Uh, from a framework from AMD, and this framework uh, had the, the idea of like um, putting more aside of the driver the complexity of like uh, dealing with uh, graphics uh, uh, on a computer. So the idea is like having a direct control over the graphics hardware directly in Vulkan. So it's allowing better performance and also having more. Gra um, uh, idea of what we can enhance when we are dealing with graphics and also there is a more efficient uh, multi-threading system. So the specification of, the, of Vulkan is under Apache license. Uh, it's uh, public and an open source. So now let's talk about the Vulkan video technical specification group. This, uh, this group has been initiated in, in uh, March 2018. Uh, with the idea of bringing uh, HEV vendors to uh, create a solution to have Vulca v video decoding, video encoding and decoding inside Vulkan. In April 2021, uh, the first uh, provisional extension released has been released, so including the video decode and encode extension, we're going to see later. Uh, and, and in December 2022, uh, Kronos finalized the Vulkan video extension for H.264 and H.265, only the decode part. Vulkan video goals, the idea is like to give uh, hardware acceleration to video codecs. Most of the solution uh, which enables uh, access to video encoding and decoding with the hardware are vendor specific, platform specific, VA, uh, V4, V4L, or, or the DX3D. So the idea was like to have like a multi-platform and multi-device uh, multi uh, support of, of uh, hardware accelerating, video hardware accelerating. And uh, it was also difficult to interrupt with Vulkan when we were doing video decoding, encoding. That's why we wanted to have like uh, video decoding, encoding, first class or part of, of, of Vulkan. So here is a a graphics to give you a bit of the architecture. So you're having the Vulkan core with all the VK image, VK buffer and everything. You discuss with the Vulkan video core, the queue, uh, the video queue. And then you discuss with the decode encode core or the decode H264, decode uh, encode H265, for example. So the API, API overview of the Vulkan uh, video API is like definitely stateless. Uh, as the API or D3D, uh, the idea is like all the complexity of managing the stream is done by the application and the decoding and encoding is done by the, by the hardware, by the driver. It's cross-platform, as I mentioned uh, before, uh, but, and uh, vendor neutral, but it can be also uh, fine-tuned by uh, capabilities. Uh, the driver is giving capabilities and we can change the, the way the... Um, the the application will interrupt with the with the driver. Uh, for example, you know, to give you a small example, with decode H264, uh, the decode big picture uh, buffer uh, in AMD is different from the one in in NVIDIA. So you have to manage it in a different way. You know this by capabilities. So the idea is like to have a causal integration with the graphics and the displays. So do the encode and decode and get like. Uh, Vulkan-like uh, uh, data, and then needs to be transformed for the application to be used, for example, for GStreamer and GST buffer or, or GST format. Uh, there is a very powerful SDK toolkit, 
bringing, bring, brought by Lunergy, implemented by Lunergy. Uh, this is very helpful. Uh, this is very easy, like to uh, to de debug uh, stuff who can happen with the driver. Even if sometimes the driver is is uh, is, uh, is crashing and you are like in the in the in the dark, but with the Vulkan validation layer, for example, you have a, you can have like a really good idea of what's happening beforehand, reaching the the the, the driver. The specification, the specification is very extensive. <laughs> the, uh, this is very the hard, the hard part of, I would say, with Vulkan. A lot of extension, a lot of detail, a lot of, of possibility. But that's also very nice to have like access to all these driver uh, things. The codec support, um, uh, H264, H265, released in, in December 2022. H264, H265 encoder going to be released by the end of the year. We have a good chance to have it. Uh, condition for release, final specification, Vulkan validation layer, CTS ready. CTS may, means like the conformance state suite, the Vulkan conformance state suite. The drivers now, uh, we're having good driver uh, everywhere, I would say, on AMD, NVIDIA, Intel. Uh, NVIDIA is the one who's having like both Linux and Windows. There is nothing right now for macOS, but it's possible with Molten VK also to have something, but it's not in the pipeline right now for Molten VK. They're having many things to do, <laughs> but at least for Windows and Linux, we're having something. Here is like a ski, uh, uh, graphics to show you a little bit of the decoding and the encoding here. So the idea is like you're having the, all the complexity of stream passing, stream managing inside uh, the application. And then we pass VK buffer to the decoding uh, video session and to the, uh, to the command uh, decode video. Uh, then we receive uh, by uh, the queue the, the results. We query the results. And then we, we receive VK image view, which are going to be translated to the application, uh, would say, uh, a structure or format or whatever. Uh, in the case of GStreamer, it's going to be a GST buffers compatible with the, the downstream elements. Encoding is, go is going to be uh, uh, upside down, uh, not upside down, but the, uh, the other way around, in the sense that we're going to receive like encoded data, we're going to create um, uh, the, the, um, this data is going to be fed to the encoder, and the encoder is going to provide. No, sorry, the other way around. <laughs> so the VK image view are like encoded, and then we're going to receive buffers encoded in the format we want, H264, H265. And it also provides the parameters that uh, we need for, for, for the, the streams SPS, PPS, VPS. So now let's talk about uh, GStreamer. Uh, so we want uh, GStreamer to be a first class citizen of the of the use of uh, Vulkan, so we work hard in Egalia to, to have this. We also provide uh, our end on the CTS and also on the drivers. Uh, we are implementing an driver, for example, for Intel. Uh, it's already uh, available for decode and also for encode. And we are uh, implementing just streamer element uh, with Victor. Uh, Victor is in charge of the decode, and I'm in charge now of the encoder on the encoder part, only for H.264 for now. Uh, FFmpeg also implemented uh, H.264, H.265 codex, uh, thanks to Lin, who like, did uh, impressive work on that, uh, with the aid of, of David Alai also. Uh, just a little mention of GS libgst codex. The idea is like, see that it's a stateless codec. Uh, we want to have like the encoder on the also on the on the libgst codec, so uh, I implemented like a, an encoder base class for H.264. The decoders like let uh, I'm gonna give the end of the token to my uh, How colleague. How much time do I have? Okay. Uh, well, basically the decoder is uh, we started, it, this is the third rewrite of the decoder. Uh, it should be landed now, effectively for 124. Uh, the, there is already a merge request, but that merge request is dependent on, on another object because we need a specific uh, or, or a very tight way to synchronize when the frame is ready. Because uh, we, there, there, there wasn't, well, there is already a, a Vulkan framework in GStreamer done by, by Matthew. 
and but it was missing some bits for order for for synchronization for synchronization you know to to signal when a buffer is ready and that's very important in the case of the coding because the, the decoder will tell you when everything is done if you have all the dpv in place if you have the decoder uh, bits in order to move forward the the decoder uh, so we have to add some an, an object there we are still in review, the Vulkan operation. And we have another uh, object that is the Vulkan decoder, basically just to isolate the, just the, 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 the Vulkan thing. So we have uh, a single, uh, this class, four different codecs. Um, and this is a way to, well, just the Vulkan decoder is in charge to, to initialize the video queue, to find a video queue that is for decoding. And uh, uh, the video station is tested in NVIDIA, in AMD, in Intel. And we have this uh, flustered results for now, uh, 100, over 100, 100 over 135. And it's difficult to handle the synchronization and the reference list and all the stuff is quite... Because it, it, as, as mentioned by, by Stefan, uh, the, capability, the, the driver must tell you the capabilities and depending on the capabilities, the DPV is handled different by each driver. Some drivers can sh uh, share the, the DPB with the output buffers. Some others need a, spe a special image with different layers to, ha to store the DPB. And another needs another list of fi uh, specific uh, images to handle the DPB. Cool. Let's speak a little bit of the encoder right now. So a bit of the same of what... Uh, uh, Victor said um, regarding the, 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 the base class and how we manage uh, the, the, the synchronization. We're using the Vulkan operation also. So we're having this object like to do both decoder and encoder. So the first version of this uh, Vulkan encoder has been, um, has been released uh, uh, really early, uh, really, uh, uh, yeah, re uh, a week ago, <laughs> I would say, uh, there is no merge request not ready right now to be uh, to be a review, but it's like supporting a, a I and P frames. Uh, there is a JST Vulkan encoder uh, base class also, which is agnostic of the, the the codec. It just initializes the video session, the queue, and everything, and then we pass through uh, the child class uh, the specific data for the for the for the codec. Right now it's only supporting H.264, but I'm really confident to have like H.265 uh, in, a, in, a, in not so long time from the, from now. Uh, as I said, yeah, I need more love for the encoder quality because right now uh, we're having a lot of uh, of uh, 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 macro blocks. Sorry. <laughs> So it has been tested on NVIDIA, uh, Linux and Windows. I just mentioned Linux, but yeah, I tried also on Windows. It's working fine, the same as Linux, so good. So as I said, coming soon, uh, we hope to have like the encoder and decoder for H.265 soon. Should be a matter of like uh, managing uh, the, 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 the parameter set and initialize the right uh, value, but we already have an early work like before, uh, like six months ago. In the ago second row, right? H.265, <laughs> so yeah. We are quite confident to have something. So here is like a transcoding example. Uh, so the idea is like you're having here the, the video test SRC, the famous one. Then you're having a Vulkan upload. So that's the design we chose for now. Like you receive a GST buffer with like a, a CAPS video row. And you have to translate this video row uh, and the format we only support right now is NV12 is transformed to something uh, compatible with Vulkan with, with the help of Vulkan uh, upload. There is a copy, yeah, this is, there is like a mechanism to translate it from one format to the Vulkan format. Then we decode with Vulkan H264 ENC, we encode, sorry. <laughs> uh, so we receive then, then uh, like a real uh, H264 uh, packet. So we can parse it with the H264 parse. We pass it to the Vulkan H264 deck, which is doing the same decoding, creating uh, data Vulkan uh, compatible or Vulkan uh, like. And then we download this data Vulkan like to be translated as, as uh, GST buffer uh, compatible with downstream elements such as auto video sync. Um, then we can give you 
a little bit of this uh, transcoding example uh, as a sorry as a demo. Okay. Okay. I don't know why. No. Can I? Can I? No. Ah, because then on the full screen. screen. Okay, escape. And uh, let's see if I can now. The demo effect, the famous one. So we're having the same pipeline. So you see, we can upload. And it's a video test SRC. It's possible also to do it with a V4L uh, source, but the quality is really bad. So <laughs> I think for the demo, I don't want to show that. But yeah, that's the Vulcan, uh, Vulcan transcoding uh, example. Uh, we're having also this. Uh, where is my? And then we're having also this example of like a decoding of the Big Bug Bunny. So this is like definitely. Uh, this is NVIDIA, right? Yeah, this is this NVIDIA. This is NVIDIA, and this is an AMD with Mesa driver. Yeah. And it's also possible to demonstrate that it's also working on Envy. Uh, I don't know. I would say it, it also works in, in Intel with Mesa with uh, Ambil driver. Yeah. So questions? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Thank you for listening and if you have any questions. What about AV1? Any plans? <laughs> it's in the pipeline, let's say. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we, we're considering it actively. <laughs> uh, yeah, Matthew. Have you done any performance testing against any no, other implementations? No performance testing. Well, we, we did some frames per second. In NVIDIA, we got a, a, a Almost 2,000 frames in, for I guess it's one in, in 1080, and in AMD with MISA around 800. But seriously, I mean, like uh, under the hood, yes, I did like some like last week uh, to compare a little bit what we're having with the encoder and with the decoder, with the latency, for example, and we are close from VA, definitely close from VA. And uh, and the the encoder uh, is also close from VA. And for the decoder, I'm, because I'm, I'm confused because I, I had like some really weird tests with the latency. I, uh, I want to work on that with the, during the the Hackfest to know what's going on. But we're having a quite good performance. Any other question? I have another one about embedded socks. Uh, usually there the, the hardware encoders, decoders are completely separate from the GPU. So I wonder if there are any play, plan, plans, maybe aside from Kronos, to somehow integrate this, provide wrappers around something like Video for Linux Stateless, or is this just not that, intended at that all? That will be dependent on the, on the driver market. You, you can actually make a driver that could exp uh, export the, v, v, the V4L, well, Maybe Nicolas can express it better. So one of the core principles of, of uh, Vulkan is that the user space must allocate every bit of memory. And this is actually not the design that has been taken for the V4L driver, including the stateless driver. So that's, that is going to be a challenge because there's a clear violation, actually, of the specification. Uh, the other challenges is that they don't support some of the weird differences that exist between hardware and they don't have, as an example, uh, bit skips for hardware that uh, partially parse headers and stuff like this. So your, your wrapper will need a proper deep parser in order to adapt. So it's a lot of adaptation and it's similar to the to the failure of the VAPI wrapper, which would have needed a proper, basically, uh, bitstream parser in order to do that. But I think 
it would be able to glue, you would be able to glue it, it's going to be awkward and difficult because it's not part of a Vulkan driver. You mean because the, the Vulkan specification is more fine grain for these quirks that the hardware might need? Correct. Well, we would need to design and propose yeah. extensions, so yeah. you're kind of a couple of months for course, for behind sure. yes. already. Yeah. Well, no I guess questions. that's it. Yeah, I think we are on time. Thank you. Thank you.